dependent upon them. But once you acquire the same knowledge that they have, your dependence upon them just came to an end. Now you know why a lot of pastors won't tell y'all the truth. Forgive me, y'all. I got to tell it like it is. The people are so dependent. That's that that's the shepherd sheep mentality. If y'all remember, I told y'all, I ain't the shepherd. And you ain't sheep. I know that's improper grammar. Y'all let me be. That I ain't your shepherd and you ain't. See, if, if that's the case, then I need a sheep dog. Yes, sir. Right? Reason being, sheep are stupid. Sheep can't learn. Sheep constantly go astray. No matter how much you try to help them, they go on. <coughs> Roam off somewhere because that's the nature of sheep. So then that means I got to get a sheep dog. So, believe it or not, now some churches are structured like that. And the pastor wants you to know I'm the shepherd and you're God's flock. Bless God. Look at the person next to you and say, You're a disciple? He's the teacher. Got that? Should be a disciple. Thank you, Elder. Should be a disciple. He's the teacher. See, what that means is you can learn. And you can learn so much that one day you can be a teacher. And that's how the truth will spread. Why is it that there's some people sitting up in the same church they've been sitting up in for the last 40 years and don't know no more than they knew after they was there for five years? Freedom comes with knowledge. The, the global elite know this and have molded society to work in their favor by keeping the masses ignorant. The only ones allowed to design are the ones who make policy and they design for dependence. One of the most powerful scripture verses that's ever been quoted is Hosea 4 and 6. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Now why do the people have a lack of knowledge? Because it's the forbidden fruit. Y'all hear this? Yes, now, check out what the rest of that verse says. See, we just quote the first phrase of that verse. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. It's Hebrew 4 and 6. I mean, Hosea 4 and 6. But it goes on to say this. Because thou hast rejected knowledge I will also reject thee y'all hear me y'all turning to see it good I want you to see it it says plain as day because you have rejected knowledge I'm going to also reject you and then it even gets deeper than that so that you will be no priest to me Seeing that thou hast, check this out people, this is some heavy stuff. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, what does the rest say? I will also forget thy children. Oh my God. Notice what it says. Seeing that you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Yes. Look at the person next to you and say, we, can, we can't afford to suffer the forbidden fruit. We can't afford that, y'all. We can't afford to suffer, I should say, not accessing the forbidden fruit. We can't afford it. We've been manipulated into thinking too much knowledge ain't good for you. 
Why is it that the people who don't know it wasn't always say that? Yes, yes. <clears throat> Hear the voice of God and our ancestors speaking. As I was putting this together, I'm going to be honest with you, this question came in my spirit so strong to ask you today. So I ask you, as God's messenger to you, as, 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 a, as a voice from the ancestors speaking to you now, here's the question. What good are you to me, ignorant? Oh. Did y'all hear the question? Looking good, but ignorant. Popular, but ignorant. What good are you to me being ignorant? More importantly, what good are you to the work of the kingdom of God if you don't understand how Satan works? I think it's 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. I think it says that these words, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, we are not ignorant of his devices. Am I correct? Is that what it says? What that means, people, is just to be sure that Satan, the satanic forces, the Satian forces, don't get the upper hand on us. Let us be aware of how Satan works. I got to tell y'all like it is, our people are not aware of how the devil works. I'm going to tell you why. The number one reason why we're not aware of how the devil works is we have no idea what he looks like. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, this is some deep stuff. Follow what I'm saying. For those who are not used to hearing me say this, follow what I'm saying. Bear with me here for a moment. Nobody knows what the devil looks like. He's a spit. <laughs> follow along with me here for a moment. Why is it, black man, black woman, why is it that they gave you a realistic human figure as your savior? The figure that they gave all of us was a blue eyed, blonde haired, soft, faggotized dude. That's the image they gave us and told us he died for our sins. And we all grew up. With the picture hanging up in our house. Ain't nobody in this house white but that picture. You know I'm telling the truth, like it or not. In your living room, got one of the pictures with the light over it. With this dude sitting there like this. Hands clasped, looking up with a beam of light shining down on him. Y'all had one and put y'all saw y'all. Yeah, see the hands right. I know you did. I had it. I grew up with it in my house. Now that's some deep stuff, y'all, because they painted a realistic image, Caucasoid image as our savior. But what image did they paint for you for the devil? An unrealistic figure. Red, with horns, a trident, a pointed tail, and flames following him wherever he went. And we saw that as the devil. See, that's some deep stuff, people. See the, see the programming there. You ain't going to see nobody like that in your travels. But you'll see people who look like that savior. And without even realizing it, the subliminal, the psychosis there, man, I'm telling you how this works. Whenever you see anybody of the same ethnicity, of the savior image that they gave you without even realizing it, compulsively, we call it in psychology, compulsive behavior, you automatically respect them. And hold them in high esteem because they look like your Savior. The mind 
control mechanism, people. Let me break these verses down for you right quick so you can really see the meaning in the metaphor. Genesis 2, 8 and 9. Genesis 2, verses 8 and 9 says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Now, let's break that down for a moment. You don't have to take my word for it. Those of you who have your Strong's Concordance, when you get home, do your own research on it. And you see it says, and the Lord. First of all, let's look at the word Lord here. The Lord here is Strong's reference number 03068, which is the word Jehovah. In this particular verse, it does not mean Almighty God. It simply means the existing one. Now, to get the real meaning of it, you need to connect it to the next word. There are two words there. And the Lord God. God in this verse is the reference number 0430, which means rulers. So, when you put the two together, it says the existing ones who are rulers or the ruling class. Getting this thing now? Planted, Strong's reference 05193. The word planted in this verse doesn't mean like you plant a garden. It's translated into the English word established. Ah, oh, shucks. <laughs> established a garden eastward. Don't let the word eastward throw you off. It ain't got nothing to do with direction. Check it out in your Strong's. The word eastward is the Strong's reference number 06924. And it means in antiquity. Deep, ain't it? Eastward means in antiquity. In other words, it's saying a long time ago. In ancient times, this was done. So, so far what we're seeing, just from the word analysis, we're seeing where it breaks down to say the ruling class or, or the existing rulers established a society long time ago. Making sense now? That's why I tell y'all go get Strong's reference concordance. Don't just read the Bible. We got too many folks standing up talking about, I turn to Psalm uh, 3 and 31. Uh, <laughs> keeping us ignorant, man. If you can't break it down, get out the pulpit. God is still saying, let my people go, pharaohs. <sighs> yeah. Knowledge, check it out. The tree of knowledge, strong, the word knowledge, there's some deep stuff, check this out. Strong's reference number 01847. Knowledge, here's what it means. Perception, skill, discernment, understanding, and wisdom. Why would God forbid you to have knowledge why would God forbid you to have perception, skill, discernment, understanding, or wisdom? Why would God tell you you can't have that? Unless it ain't God. But a people who want to keep you enslaved. That doesn't make any sense. How are you going to give your best to God ignorant? So, brothers and sisters, we must understand that the Garden of Eden mentioned in this passage in Genesis is a metaphorical representation of a society that is founded on dependence and control. The question now I ask again is why would the allegorical Adam and Eve be deprived of knowledge? Well, in the next chapter, the devil talked to Eve and told her 